Okay, everybody, welcome to PowerShell. So what I'll do is the first thing I'll do is I'll do an import CSD and then I'll pipe it to get member. What that's going to let me do is it's going to let me see what methods I have access to. Bang. So in each case, you're going to see that I have the equals get hash code get type to string method. And then the properties that are inside of it, which are basically columns in Nessus, right? You're going to have a CVE column, a CVSS column, a description, the host, the name, the plugin ID that was used to discover the vulnerability, the output from the plugin, the port, the protocol, the risk, the solution, the synopsis. And now you're here seeing in each of these, it gives you like a little quick little description of what that stuff is. So what we're gonna do is I wanna just see my high vulnerabilities, right? That's all I want, I wanna just see my high vulnerabilities. So you're seeing as he's going through this, he's saying, hey, this IP address is running a high vulnerability, right? Look at that Apache 2.0. <clears throat> on port 80, and it gives the synopsis, the report, the CVSS number, the CVE number. It gives you all the goodies. See that? Very, very good. Very handy. Nicely formatted. Well, if you're saying that I want to look for unique host, in other words, I don't want dupes. Show me all the unique hosts in the environment with highs. As a pen tester, this is a big deal because you're looking for the stuff you can attack. So what are the boxes that are unique? You know, they may have the most highs in the environment. So now you come up with a list of IP and you can do other stuff. Like let's say, for example, you want to grab something that's like a little bit more of a, an ISO kind of role, right? You're working with your sysadmins. So I want to get the highs, the mediums, the low, where there's a risk rating, and I want to make sure that I sort it by plugin ID, CVE, CVSS, risk rating protocol, and then I want to output it in something that I can actually manipulate. And PowerShell has this thing called grid view. So when you select all the data that you want, you can output it to this grid view. And now with this grid view, you can actually manipulate your data, right? Add criteria to it, search it, sort it, and all this. So it's very, very nice and very, very professional. And it's built right into that where you work. We're trying something that was that that unique. I really thought it was a good way to attack the problem. I really thought it was a good way to attack the problem. You know, it's like you know what the, your lockdown desktop constraints are. And, uh, you know, I really thought it was a good way to attack the problem. So uh, I really think this is something that should probably be expanded upon, you know. Yeah, building out like full blown UI stuff for Nessus all in PowerShell. That way you can just move around all the files. And you don't have to worry about um, breaking your secure desktop config. I'm going to do some real simple. Reverse shell stuff. Let's see if I can get the IP address right. Yeah, it's 127.1234. OK, so what I'm going to do is open up a command prompt. Can you do reverse shell stuff in PowerShell? Short answer, yeah. Okay, so now that we've got that going, let's just run this. Okay, so we'll take it from this command prompt, paste it all in there, and let's see if it kicks over to the other Linux box. Boom, yes it does. 
Okay, let's see if it's shy. Okay. The next one is a simple port scan. Are you noticing, guys, that I really like, I really like when we do stuff and it's um, directly from a shell versus having to invoke PowerShell, which is, you notice with this, you just say PowerShell space dash command. So from within your regular Windows command prompt, you can invoke PowerShell without like actually starting PowerShell to say, hey, PowerShell dash command do this. Okay, so I'm starting up Metasploit right now. So I got the MSF console going. Okay, so you've got this now ready to catch your ready to catch your inbound payload, right? So I've got Metasploit running on my Linux box, use multi-handler, set exit on session equals false, set my payload to be a reverse HTTPS. Now I set my L port to 4443 instead of 443. Again, I'm only doing that just because I don't want to have to do the whole running Metasploit as root. Set exit function to thread. This is just one of the things that makes the command shell coming back more stable. And then run it as a background job. So he's listening for the inbound connection. I can jump in here. Make sure that I got the IP import correct. Okay, now what I've done is I actually have PowerSploit stored out on the web. So PowerSploit If you take a look at it, right, PowerShell dash command IEX, right, new object web download client, right? So this is all the same, but you see where I actually have it located? It's out in my Amazon AWS, and it's got something called invoke shell code. And with invoke shell code, you can just specify the payload, specify the host, the port, and then just say force, right? So now I like this joker up. There it is. Staging native payload. Boom. Interpreter session open. Nice handy dandy interpreter. Whee! Okay. Gotta love it. If I can help you learn about who we are, and hopefully, if you're willing to join us, this is InfoSec Addicts.